We've heard the same typical rhetoric from China, threats of retaliation, asking foreigners not to meddle in internal affairs. But what can Beijing realistically do, if anything? Like you say, you know, we haven't received any specifics about what Beijing has, um, can do. They've brought this line out about multiple things, selling F-16s to Taiwan, sanctioning officials in Xinjiang. Um, you know, there are a few things that I guess could be in the mix, though, of course, none of this has been mentioned officially. Uh, US, the U.S. Um, currently enjoys visa-free travel to Hong Kong. That could be um, something that, uh, you know, they choose to do. They could also retaliate against U.S. companies like we've seen in the past. Um, but right now, you know, it doesn't seem like there will be any immediate action because this bill still has to be passed, the review still has to happen. They have to actually find Hong Kong, you know, not deserving of the special trade status. And like all that's going to take time before we see any actual action from China. And we got some recent comments from Trump that this trade deal is likely going to be signed at the APEC summit, which we had reported before. Does that comment or anything around this Hong Kong bill change the status of where trade talks are right now? It seems unlikely that the Hong Kong bill will impact the trade talks. It looks like it's still on that slow but cautious momentum, you know, heading towards APEC. Both sides are working towards signing the deal there. So I don't think Hong Kong really impacts um, how trade, the trade deal turns out. Um, you know, both sides have an incentive to keep those things separate. And we have seen in the past that China has tried to keep the trade issues separate from political conflicts. All right, Sophie, I, I want to bring you in here and just try and complicate things a little bit further as well. Of course, we heard from Carrie Lam yesterday that political, well, that policy address, uh, she, she didn't really manage to address, at least addre arguably address political matters in that speech, though. Uh, do you think, given her plan, she'll be able to get the support she needs to see those plans that she talked about yesterday through? Dave, Carrie Lam uh, may enjoy the majority in LegCo, but the pro-democracy camp, they yesterday were able to prove their ability to shut down the conversation in the chamber, even when holding just about a third of seats. So with the chance for more future disruptions, uh, in addition to the backlog of proposals for lawmakers to wade through, the obstacles are just piling up for Mrs. Lam when it comes to delivering on her 200-plus initiatives. And plus, we had the pro-Beijing Democratic Alliance Party expressing their disappointment when it came to the policy speech not including political measures to deal with the city's unrest and so expect her to get a grilling from alleged members during the Q&A session to be held later at 10 30 a.m. Hong Kong time if that is allowed to go through if she's given the chance to speak. Now so on on the economy and just business sentiment as well how effective what, what's been said about the i guess the potential effectiveness of what those policies might actually bring to tackle the problems now and the sort of longer term structural issues as well So she did address the longer term structural issues with a focus on housing, social welfare and uh, forward looking policies. But there's little immediate relief uh, for the economy. Uh, that's according to Bloomberg Intelligence. Now, for example, we had five billion Hong Kong dollars carved out for transitional housing and 700 hectares of private land to be requisitioned. But that does not take care of public housing needs in the here and now. And there is a controversial plan to build artificial islands that may draw more ire. And on the business front, guys, banks are being called upon to provide support for SMEs, which may not do so much, though, to prevent worsening business conditions with loan demand already being weighed even before the protests, given the environment of steep rents and labor costs. And even lawmaker Claudio Mo, opposition lawmaker, uh, told us earlier on Bloomberg TV that she is worried about the deteriorating business conditions.